Hey everybody, it's Jay and Nick. We are back from Joliet, where the elite meet to cheat. Audubon Country Club is a really nice racetrack. It's got a fabulous ambiance. Now, Team Sheen, fresh from their unexpected victory yeah. at the 24-hour race yeah. at Audubon earlier this year, this time with their two-car effort, they did not dominate. They failed to dominate. All kinds of stuff happened in this race. We're just gonna go down the list. For the second race in a row, car with a giant bird. Hope that becomes a trend. Yeah, totally. We also had a Jamaican bobsled, always sweet. Yeah, we had the car and driver team came back. No black flags for car and driver, none. And they finished in the top five. This was a spectacular and unusually good performance for these guys. Ordinarily, they would have won a trophy, but I don't think they've quite undone all the heartache they've caused us over the years. If they do this a couple more times, hey, they might win something. There you go. We had a fantastic Saturn. It was just papered in real unedited quotes taken directly from Craigslist. We had a rookie team in a Focus. Great bunch of guys, great attitude. And they had a Ford Focus, which yeah. we mentioned a couple yeah. episodes ago, that you used to be, I cannot believe cannot you got a Ford Focus for $500. For $500. Ford Focus. And then at a certain point, we're yeah. not sure when, people are yeah. like, oh, well, yeah, yeah. Ford yeah. Focus, yeah. I don't know. Dude, so this, got this was actually a nice Ford Focus yeah. with a nice sort of rally-inspired paint job. Did yeah. anyone care? No. No. Apparently, you can do whatever you want with the Ford Focus yeah. these days. Also had a team of rookies with a Miata, and eh, usually that's a bad combination, but these were high school kids, they were super nice, they drove really fast, they ran really clean, best of all, they cut high school to come to Tech on Friday. Now Team Anonymous has been racing for a long time, Honda Civic, they blew up their transmission, they tried to fix their transmission, they put it back in, ah, it didn't work, they had to change it again, okay, now we're golden, and then the transmission on their tow vehicle, <laughs> I think they're still stuck at the track. Yes, they still are. Now, anytime Phil recommends the kind of car that you should buy, you should not listen. This yeah. has happened with the K car, worst car ever, Subaru XT, worst car ever. Yeah. Phil said to these guys, he's been saying to everybody, but these guys particularly, you should get a Spirit RT. They're great. They have a hundred million horsepower driving through the front wheels. You're going to be a real race car driver. They turned no laps. <laughs> And as you know, we've got a penalty called the Taiwanese National Anthem, which is that classic car alarm sound, and we give you that little module, and you have to wire it into your battery and then listen to that as you go around for the rest of the entire race. Now, this team, for some reason, did not wire it to their battery, but they wired it to the wiring for their mass airflow sensor. And it turned out, as soon as that alarm came on with that, that the car would stop running, and that was extremely but terrible. Special award for this race was the 47-year-old middle manager in a white Monte Carlo cruising for girls at the White Castle. It is a self-explanatory award, and it went to the guy into white Monte Carlo. It's one of those cars that actually, when it was new, General Motors tried to make us think that yeah. it was sporty. They it had a Dale. So awful. They had a Dale Earnhardt signature edition of this car. I saw one of those driving around San Francisco the other day. How does that happen? He's a race car driver <laughs> and the car's supposed to be sporty, but you know, now it's not even a decade later and people know like that car is so hell and not sporty. <laughs> and yet here it is at the racetrack, it goes full circle and is hilarious. <laughs> the heroic fix was double B racing. This was really simple. They did a Camaro engine swap in less time than it takes to fill a Camaro with gas. Yeah, and this engine that they blew up had this cartoon style like <laughs> mushroom explosion out of the side of the oil pan. It was like if you were to do an art installment on a blown up Camaro, that's what it would look like. I got screwed, went to Team Bad Decisions in their Pontiac Transport minivan, and that was sort of the reason they got screwed. There was something about the judges misclassing some cars that should have been B cars into C, and the minivan got screwed because it would have won. Who cares Who about that racing cares? stuff? Yeah. Where the guy really got screwed was he was actually the owner of that Craigslist Saturn, and he's actually going to sell that car, presumably because the Transport is the greatest racing vehicle of all yeah. time, doesn't yeah. mean anything You can't else. go back to a Saturn after you've had a Transport. Yeah. And so he's going to sell that car, but he figures, yeah, one last time I'll let my buddies race it. And what happens? So <laughs> they're driving along, clang, the engine falls out, engine mounts to fail. This is not a euphemism. No, nope. literally fell out. No problem. Yeah. They said, we're going to put the engine back in with nylon ratchet straps. And they did. And it worked until they're driving along. The motor blows half of its piston <laughs> straight out the side of the block and starts this giant oil fire. And then the fire melts through the ratchet straps and clang, the engine falls out. They got screwed. <laughs> the judge's choice award. Now this shows how I am really too old for this. 
It is Team Too Wicked. And I think that the judges just like the fact that this is a character from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Carl the Neighbor? Yeah. Carl the Neighbor has I know a, nothing about this. He has a Dodge Stealth that says Too Wicked on the side. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And so they have this General Motors V6 powered Porsche. It blew up the transaxle. It is a father and son team. I, I don't understand any of this. <laughs> Organizer's Choice went to Team Sucker Punch and yet another Camaro. This was like the weekend yeah. of Camaro yeah, domination. It's Joliet. Well, it yeah. is Joliet. Yeah. So these guys have been with Lemons for a long time. Somebody said they were at Nelson's Ledges, as Lemons <laughs> racers call it. And uh, they always bring us great snacks. They've got a great attitude, and their car is awful, but, you know, Camaro. whatever. It's yeah. Camaro. Yeah. And uh, so one of the ways in which this car is awful is that it won't run at speeds below 40 miles an hour. <laughs> so once it gets out on track, it's fine. Runs smooth. Well, but in the pits, it can't go the 10 mile an hour speed limit. And what most teams with this problem, what most teams would do, is they would drive through the pits at 50 saying, sorry, our car can't go slower than 50. It is your problem. But these guys are like, no, it's the rules are rule. We just got to do the best we can. And every time they drove by, pure hilarity. Takes us to the index of effluency. Yeah, this is really simple. This is an 87 Jaguar XJS. The guy bought it because he has a Jaguar V12 powered Checker Marathon chop top. Because who doesn't? Yeah. And he said, you know, actually, the best use of this car is not my Checker Marathon. <laughs> it is as a Lemons race car. Yeah, as good as an idea yes. as the Checker hot rod exactly was. Right. This is the one thing, the one thing that is a better use. Take this crappy car that was bought as a parts car and race it on a road course. Race course. Race road course. And that's it. Here's lemons in a nutshell. Ha, 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 ha.